Mud's Market and the three ships that they're offering. Today we're going to cover the Quark Class Miracle Worker Marauder. Because that's what it is. All the gear we talk about will be in the description below, including the links to the wiki pages. All right. First thing off the jump, I got to tell you, this ship was mad fun to fly. She handled really well. And uh, here we go. On the steam build, we have three dual beam banks. Re-engineered for crit D damage at damage times four. Up front. The ultimate torpedo set. We have all three pieces going on here. So besides it's goodies, right? Let me scroll down and hit show more. This is why every plasma set that's out there usually plasma build uses it. On hit or miss, they still get a plasma bolt dealing damage and the fire cycle haste for 12 seconds. Fire cycle haste is really important. Experimental Romulan plasma beam. This is the free weapon. Confirmed, it uses no weapon power. The deflector is a little different with the revolutionary deflector array. Okay, anytime you hit a uh, scatter volley or uh, fire at will, you'll leave, you get exotic damage for it. I thought being plasma, let me test it out. Wasn't too bad actually. Prevailing engines. Marsilio Harmonic Warp Core. This is not meta, but I love using it. The Tilly Shield. And the two-piece set. The shield, wait, scroll too far on that one. The two-piece set gives you shield penetration. The shield gives you shield penetration. And the two-piece set gives you 120 hull regeneration. So that's kind of hot. We got the heavy biomolecular plasma turret in the back with its console for 7.5 plasma damage again if you haven't seen one of my videos um, oh yeah and I get the extra 2% damage because I'm using a set piece from reputation um, even though it says bonus it's not category 2 it's still category 1 and there's a Ferengi Omnidirectional on this build also. Lorca's Custom Fire Control, mainly for that shield penetration. The crit chance is kind of cute. We got four Spire Vulnerability Locators for crit chance. Remember, this captain is not Romulan. We have the Domino Console for its Fire Cycle Haste. Bonus to all weapon damage. All damage, actually. Uh, bridge officer cooldown. It's just a great console to have all around. Point defense bombardier for its projectile damage and crit chance. Teamed with its console. Dynamic power redistribution module, which has a damage resistance rating on it and direct energy damage percentage. But the main reason it's there is the two piece set. The two-piece set gives you directed energy damage. Translated into normal English, that's damage that's just going through the shields, 33%. So we have the assimilated module for its crit chance, crit severity, weapons power, and damage control. The control expertise, eh, I'm not really using it on this build. The biomolecular, uh, Bio neural infusion circuit. Wow. For hull capacity and crit severity. Again, the control is just there. The tachyokinetic converter for its flight turn, crit chance, crit severity, and it has control also, even though I don't use it. <laughs> the hydrodynamic compensator, engine power, auxiliary power, 
accuracy and flight turn rate. And that's the console for the heavy turret. Now, on traits, we have a good day to die. Terran targeting systems, which should be on every single build by now. Superior beam training and superior projectile. Self-modulating fire. Operative for more crit chance and crit severity. Innocuous for crit severity. Inspirational leader. And intelligence off intelligence agents cachet. I'm doing really good today, guys. Whoa, hey. Alright. Starship traits. Weapon emitter overdrive. Transcranial sensor link. The runes of our enemy. Terran goodbye. My favorite, best hope of the empire. Intertwine matrices and a reputation. We start off a radiant detonation. It didn't do that much damage, so this can be replaced with Tyler's duality. Enhanced armor penetration, enhanced shield penetration, Omega Gravision amplifier, and magnified firepower. Now on deck, we have Beam Overload 3, Attack Pattern Beta 1, Chemo Sight 1, and Beam Fire at Will 1. Now Chris and Steve, my two TAC officers, are from the Embassy, so I get the crit chance, crit severity off of those. And these two, that's Mixed Armament Synergy, Narrow sensor bands, auxiliary to battery, emergency power to shields. On science, structural analyst three, science team two, hazard one. Now these two officers right here are Jem Hadar. They don't give you as much crit chance and crit severity. They give you a plus five to all weapon damage. But being non-Romulan, it's as close as it gets. Then this guy who has an auxiliary to battery. Engineering team one is a Kantari. Gives you plus 2% to all damage. Hull restoration, hull regeneration. And root resistance. It also pumps up your warp core by, by plus 15. So... That's what I have for damage officers. And my duty officers, they didn't change. Stacking crit chance with energy weapons. I have one purple, two blues. And in engineering, I got two orcs to bat. Then I have a medical officer for increased hull regeneration. So we're gonna get into the run. There was some lag in the run, so that I wound up beating out a dude that should have beat me. I did respec because I couldn't stand losing the DPS anymore. And I put points into defensive maneuvers to see how it would work out. Those three points would otherwise be into damage control and warp core. Got two points in impulse. And two points in drain. Those are always going to be there. I do have hull plating also. No damage control. Depending on the assimilated module. And. I'm all the way up. On long range targeting. I did not go all the way into. Offensive coordination. Because I needed the point for warp core potential. So. <laughs> this ship really surprised the heck out of me. It's a powerful little thing. Now the emergency monopoly trait here. 
I'm sure someone's gonna find a way to make it go super OP. I'm kinda thinking maybe it might be a more of a PvP thing, but hey. So let's get into the run. For some reason this run was really, really laggy. As a matter of fact, the guy that scored just under me, when I look at the graph, it shows like he wasn't there. He wasn't doing any damage because of the lag. Like right there, I got lag. But this was a decent run, so I used it. Because in testing the ship out, I did so many runs. When one sticks, see, for the average player, is good and then some. And this team's on point, by the way. They're working together. I was kind of lucky to get a team like this. Everybody had their shit together. Look at this. Boom. Dude put down his bubble and went to the other side. That's hot. He's like, yo, here's my DPS. So I'm gonna take care of him. So I'll put up the DPS chart at the end of the video today. And yeah, that guy that came up just shy of me, I would say if it wasn't for the lag, he would have done 200K. Easy. I mean, right there, the lag stopped my fire cycle haste. And that's all she wrote, guys. Let's look at these numbers. Right there, we're writing back and forth to each other because he posted his numbers from his DPS calculator and they were lower than what I had. And the only explanation for it, it was the lag. So, nothing to sneeze at. 160, almost 161 on the DPS meter. I'm Soul Keeper, by the way, on this character. Alright, guys, listen. If you launch Star Trek Online through the Epic Game Launcher, that is my supporter creator code. Just as you see, it dashes and everything. Enter that on checkout, and I get a small kickback from what you buy. All right, if it's your first time here, please drop a sub, leave a like, catch me on Twitch.